Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody at home as well. First things first, uh, thank you very much for inviting us here to address to you this evening. Um, we are the Southern Electric Traction Group, and we are here to talk to you about the ongoing restoration of the Bluebell Railway's unique 4VEP uh, 3417. Right, first important item of the evening. As of now, everyone at home and everyone in this room, you're on the southern region, all right? We've annexed the place. Important safety tip, don't lick the juice rail. It's tings, okay? It's tings. Right, uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce my co-presenter, Chris Buckland. Uh, Chris is uh, currently retired. You can tell, can't you? Um, Chris was formerly senior production manager at Wimbledon Park. Chris was the man who originally chose 3417 for preservation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks for that. Um, Chris was also a depot manager at Effingham Junction. Chris's career lasted, well, no, Chris turned up on the railway for nearly 40 years. Um, he did about 25 minutes of work in that time. Um, I speak from experience. I watched him do it. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a busy day for you. Um, Chris is our... Chief Mechanical and Electrical Engineer, and uh, without him, we'd be lost. Over to you, bud. A little introduction about Steve. Where do I start? It's a long story. Um, but Steve, uh, most of you will know him as Driver Potter. I know him with a lot of other words, but we can't do it because we're in the polite company. But, um, and we worked with, uh, I worked with Steve for the 20 years at Wimbledon, and he was a depot driver, and was used and abused, and... Uh, by me and most of the maintenance staff at most times, I think. Sometimes I enjoyed it. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, mostly in a good way. Uh, I think so. I think he's still in therapy. You're still, still in therapy, isn't you? Oh, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he left and went into the big bad world of driving mainline trains, yes. I yeah. know. Yeah, much to the consternation of the travelling public. Um, I asked him to add, because they always get a bit scared if they see him at the front. I know I do. I'll get the next train, because he finds a life out. If they can't take a joke, they shouldn't have got on in the first place. It's not my problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've known him for about 20 years. I tell you what, he makes great tea, eats bacon, bacon butties like they're going out, going to be rationed, um, and is single handedly keeping Britain's chocolate bio industry alive. Um, and in you can a see, shipping disaster, who's laughing? He's hey, look very at this. well lagged, as you can see. Yeah. Yes, yes. But after all that, I should be nice to him and say he's uh, all in a, a decent egg. Thank you very I think, much. I think. Uh, do I give you the money now or later? Later. All right, okay, right. Um, as an aside, Lynn Abrahams is here as our PowerPoint operator. We're very grateful to her for giving up an evening. Thank you, Lynn. It's not too late to run. That's all, okay? It's not too late to run. Right then. We've forgotten Coops at the back there. Oh, yeah, but we put him at the back for a reason. Yeah, I know. And they can't see him either. <laughs> now, you can either come down here or stay anonymous. You wimp. So, <laughs> right. we'll just start off with a bit of history about 3417. I'm sure a lot of you know about electric stock, but I thought I'd just give you an overview Quite a long overview of what the where the VEP started and where she where she is at the moment. So, so in the early sixties, steam is coming to end on the southern region, and trains are needed to be replaced by the old guard. And the four VEP is one of the designs being built to fill the void left by the designs of Bullard and Mansell. Mansell, not Mansell, not Mansell. No. no, he's a racing driver, as yeah. I got sold earlier. Um, it's raining out there, isn't it? I'll tell you. Um, if we get if we get struck by lightning, yeah. yeah. Um, so we had the four bet. Four coaches, the in acronym is Vestibule Electric Pneumatic, which I'm sure you understand the name, and was based on the previous four six, which was Corridor Integrated Guard of, of the 1963 vintage. And unlike some historic southern designs, such as the four TC sets, were, which were built at the same time for the Bournemouth electrification, the VET wasn't a recycle from local hall coaches, but was completely new. The Southern Region had a history of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it ain't broke, then definitely don't throw it away. And uh, that's what they used to use on the old coaches. But this sensible penny pinching mentality means that there are uh, car class 455 units in service today, which have compressors, which were built in 1936, and traction motors, which were built in 1936. Good bits of kit. Well, they did have traction motors in 1936, but now they're AC. So the vets were entirely brand new built to provide high capacity and fast loading times on stopping and semi-fast services in and out of London, which would then feed into longer distance routes operating by the more luxurious and depending on who happen to be driving much, much faster long distance services. So we get back to 3417. 
3417 was part, was, was a part of the first batch of 20 units. And the two driving trailers were built at Holgate Works in York, while the motor brake and trailer open were constructed at Derby. Once marshaled together, the units was dispatched to Bournemouth and released into service on the 8th of July 1967, when I was one, or nearly one. Or was it one with VAT? Uh, probably plus VAT. Yeah, yeah. VAT, yeah. Um, we'll go for a walk in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Despite now being known as a Wilmington unit, 3417 didn't actually spend a lot of time with Wimbledon and uh, spent much of his working life based at Bournemouth, uh, being, being allocated to Fratton and Eastleigh, and only becoming a Wimbledon unit in the mid 1990s. So she spent most of the time down by the seaside. However, despite it being a relatively common occurrence for many other units of its type, 3417 was never transferred off region. So she stayed the Southwestern unit all her life. A lot of units used to get transferred to Central Division and used to go to the Eastern Division, but she stayed with us for the rest of for all of her life. So 3417 was new, when new, carried the number 7717. The Southern region, not wishing to follow the practice of other less sophisticated and urban railways, but which we mean that of the example ran out of King's Cross or Euston. <coughs> Or push yourself and, uh, you know, how you're not, you're not say the P word, are you? Yeah, I am. I am. I'm going to say the Paddington and we are <laughs> going to say the uh, God's Wonderful Railway. Yes. Never followed the practice of the last numbers of class type, which the first number, the unit number, was the class type of the VEPs being class 423. Well, BR brought the Southern to heel and was told to behave yourself and fully unit numbers on everything from now on in. We are delighted to report that this was greeted with the appropriate contempt and Southern House stuck their fingers up to everyone else and we carried on using the four number system to this day. So we don't confirm to the rest of the railway. So there, 7717 was renumbered to 3117. So as to show the first, show willing and the first number being the last number of the class. At this time, the unit was still in its original formation and stayed as such until September 1993. When the original motor coach, which was 62137, was removed to have its parcel cage halved in length, thanks to a downturn in parcel traffic. Since this worked longer than the, the, the modifications made to the other coaches at the same time, 3017 received an already modified and finished motor coach from 3075, which is number 62236, which it has kept ever since. So the unit is pretty much original, so it's got three coaches of its original, original formation and just a one uh, uh, 3075. Um, after this work was completed, the unit having already produced the ad modifications such as fluorescent lighting fitted and the first class compartment from each driving trailer dis disclassified, the unit was to return to traffic and was now numbered 3417. You're all right there. <coughs> yes. <Just go. laughs> lots of numbers, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> lots and lots of numbers. Ah. So we move forward to 2003, 20, 20, 20, 2003, even I'll get that one, right? When I had the idea of celebrating the retirement of these venerable workhorses. Yes, it's my fault, folks. <laughs> Part of the idea was to pick one of the first 20 units and repaint it in the original BR blue. Give it a full works treatment and let the old girls go out with ceremony. Yes, all trains are ladies, even when they ain't Gordon. That's quite appropriate, Van Cleef. Uh, no. <laughs> Stick to the script. Stick to the script, <laughs> yes. Stick to the script. Um, and, and I've seen how well this was received with other locomotives being withdrawn. I thought it would provide some positive publicity. And I was asked to present a paper to the SWC board, which I did. Unfortunately, they ambushed me with big, long words. And I'm not good with long words, am I? Old punctuation. No. Or spelling. Or spelling. <laughs> So he had all the words, his phrases such as cost-benefit analysis, and he rejected the idea. Bugger. Yeah, it was bugger, <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't being beaten, and I got my ducks in a row and threw together another paper, stuff with cost-benefit analysis. Is that right? Yeah. Is that the plural? Analysis. Yeah, something yeah. like that, yeah. Material costs, work plans, price of tea and biscuits, you know, that sort of stuff, all that rubbish. As much information about trains as possible. This time it got through. So the old adage... Bullshit baffles brains. Turns out to be true. And a lot of lies, probably, mostly. Yeah. yeah. No, well, no, I mean, I mean, no, 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 no. So the first job was to pick a good unit, one in decent nick internally, not long out of C4 exam, which is a, a major overall exam, and most importantly, a reliable one. I wanted the first unit, which was 7701 or 3401. Unfortunately, there was a very small problem with the uh, ambition, though. I remember that. It was. It was a basket case. It was a rubbish. Yes. And uh, it was an absolute, complete basket case. It was the, a heap. The, um, 
it, its history was absolutely terrible. So I had to forget about that one. And I burned a lot of night time, uh, nights and days sifting through unit histories, defects, work visits, lifting histories, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until I found one that was worth spending the money on. That unit was this thing. And it was recently it was recently out of work, so had a great defect history, no loss of power or traction issues, and the internal trim was in fairly good shape. So she was a good one. So she was a good basis from where we start. So we pulled the unit from service and tucked it away on 7 Road at Wimbledon, where the bodywork was rubbed back to get rid of the old SWT livery. The interior is ripped out and sent away to Eastley Works for retrim, which cost £64,000. But we didn't actually tell anybody that, did we? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. That was no. six, £64. Pound, no, it? it was done free. Well, free, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And while this was going on, he was repainting his Spec 81 BR Blue by contractors who had happened to have an on site, happened to be on site at the time. Even though the slam door feet was going for scrapping in a few months, SWT took great uh, pride in the condition of the units uh, before they were going to the great scrappy in the sky, the great maintenance car sign the shed. The whole project was carried under strict secrecy, absolute strict secrecy. The unit didn't see daylight for, daylight for two months. And if we needed to move it to accommodate other work, like keeping the southwestern suburban rolling stock for service, for example, the unit was moved under cover of darkness and only ever after the last service to pass the depot. We don't want any urbits watching it going by, do we? No, no pictures. Didn't you ban me from bringing a camera in? Yes. Work? Yeah. I banned you at all because, you know, it was easier. I was genuinely pulled into the office and told, if you bring a camera in, if you take pictures of it, I'll hang you from a lighting tower. Mm. I think and he meant words, it. <laughs> I think the words were, you're dead. Uh, yeah. yeah. But you've, you've threatened me with that before. I have, yes. <laughs> and I should probably threaten you in the future. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So where was I? Where was I? We kept costs fairly sensible by robbing foreign or scrap units of handy bits, for example... One fratten unit which has come up for the wheel lathe. We, we had much better toilet doors than 3417. And which returned to fratten looking unaccountably shabbier than it arrived. I'm not sure that, how that happened. They fell off. They fell off. They fell off. And the new one, the old ones fell on again. Yeah, I know. Amazing, Terrible. amazing. Terrible. I'll tell you what, it's just like Paul Daniels, isn't it? <laughs> um, though we didn't get everything right. No. She said, so how surprising they yeah. Um, Example, the roof somehow ended up with painted with something that looked like Cuprinol mixed with grit, but since the only one seen it would be either pilots or our final approach to rethrow or pigeons, we thought, fuck ah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't see that far up, can you? <laughs> so, when I originally planned the whole refurbishment, I wanted 3417 to be renumbered back to its original unit, which was 7717. Not just the running number, but all the back office systems and the central rolling stock library as well. But I hadn't counted on a certain nameless Wimbledon and Depot manager who kindly wrote the text for the dedication plaque on the side, as you can probably see one of these pictures are going there. It was his, I'll go and do that job. And I said, all right, you go and do it. And he buggered it up. So he had changed the number from 7717 to what it was on there, which is 3417. So but despite his being his cock up, he refused to pay for the new place, even though he could afford it. He was a Depot manager. He was made him, you know, made loaded. 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 Yeah. So 3417 had to stay 3417, which is a bit galling to me. Now that name, that manager's name, I, I I think it was called Steve Price. When I'm not was sure, no, I'm not I can't sure. Remember. I can't remember. And, and Steve and, Price. And we know where you live. And uh, tell like you what, if he's on it, Zoom now, I'm in mean, rubble. I've not got any grudge about it whatsoever. No, you're, you're um, dealing with it, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. And even after two decades. <laughs> Anyhow, the nameplates were at least bang on, and we also had cast aluminium double arrows made. We even found and used the original holes that were um, that were in underneath the driving driver's sliding vents. Um, in, in 1967. With the bogies painted, all the exams completed, the unit was ready to unveil Gordon Pettit. Yes, we all have to stand the salute. Yes, yes. yes. Stand the yep. Up, Gordon yep. Pettit, yep. Himself at Waterloo at 2nd of July, June 2004. But as it's 3417, oh, that's very nice. I wonder what happened there. Uh, uh, don't talk about that. No, we won't go around that. Whole new story there, isn't it? <laughs> but, <laughs> but if it wasn't 3417, it wouldn't go easy. Yeah. And I was doing a final walk around of the unit and discovered to my horror that the newly refurbished toilets, the brand new mirrors they we made from were sitting on the floor. They weren't smashed, thankfully, but and it transpired that the contractors, who were quality contractors, had put the toilet mirrors back on with double-sided tape. So I was in a flat spin. 
what I've got to do. It's going out of his show, and people are going to see it and want to go to the car seat. So I sprinted around the shed, found, found two fitters and barked orders at them to get screws, tools, and get busy. And as the unit made its way to Waterloo, they were feverishly fitting the mirrors properly. And he just finished as they slid gently into platform 12. But it was, it all went to plan, more or less. Um, the ceremony itself, the naming ceremony was a great success. Mr. Pettit, amongst others. Oh, sorry, I mentioned his name again. Mr. Pettit. Mr. Pettit himself gave a speech. So did the rest of the great and good. Uh, they were all loaded up onto 3417. And the first, the first journey for the unit in service as BR Blue was down to Basingstoke on a press run. After that, 3417 stopped just being a VEP. It was our unit. Um, Wimbledon Park staff adopted the unit with great enthusiasm, and they ensured that the unit not only became the most cosseted rolling stock on the company, but that by now she, or the old girl, or the Bucky Bell, because namers are a bit special, um, it was never allowed to do anything other than gentle turns uh, used by well-behaved passengers. Never went to Weybridge. Never went to Guildford via Epsom. Once of Reading. Once. That was enough. Yeah. I remember walking into the office the night that it went to Reading because I'd never heard so many swear words that I'd never heard before from one mouth. There was things that, of, there was things that controlled it was physically impossible, I think, because <laughs> it went to it went to Reading and come back with windows smashed and and uh, and um uh, um mirrors etched. Mirrors etched. And um, lights smashed. I was not best pleased. No, you weren't. Yeah. But you, you very crisply made your displeasure known. I said... You didn't even need a phone. I tatted a lot. Yeah. Anyway, apart from the one reading, it was well looked after. Um, it became our depot pet. I adored the thing. I'd, I'd drive it just because. If it was there and I was not doing anything on an afternoon shift, usually didn't. Um, he doesn't do a lot. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> I used to be his manager. He doesn't do a lot. But what I do, I do properly. Mostly. Shut up. Mm. Um, at the time when I was a depot driver, when Chris was uh, senior production manager still, uh, we had a wheel lathe that we used for on-company work, turning the flats out of our units, but also we would have uh, contract work. Uh, so... We used 3417 as a depot tractor because nothing else we had would couple to half the stuff that would come in. So we shunted Pullman coaches with 3417. We shunted Bitten's support coach with 3417. We did. We shunted 60163 Tornado with 3417. No, you like that engine, don't that you? That was a whole other story, that is, I tell you. Right, so that steam engine. No, the steam engine. Now the steam engine is indelibly imprinted on my head. It turned up. It got turned. It went out of the Oxford then and never darkened my doors again. <laughs> but we won't go into that. We'll move swiftly on. You're right there. No, I'm all right. Okay. I didn't say before it, but yeah. I'll be all right. Uh, one of the things we did with the unit, with the company's blessing, was we took it to the Swanage Railway. Um, obviously, these things can be plugged into certain locomotives, and they will. You can drive the locomotive effectively remotely from the from the unit. So we were the first train over the Swanage branch since 1972. I oh, look. It's I your favourite engine. Oh, look at that. Bastard thing. Um, uh, <laughs> it's got nicely turned wheels, though. Can you see yeah. that? Nicely turned wheels. Eventually. Yeah. Yes. yeah. We were the first over the Swanage branch um, since 1972. We were the first push-pull working since 1972. Um, I got to drive part of that. Still very proud of that. Um the Swanage Railway Diesel Gala became something of a habit over the years, um, which the Wimbledon staff very much enjoyed supporting, which was, of course, everything to do with the trains and nothing to do with the beer. Oh, no, no, no. Nothing to do with no, beer. No. Sober at all Absolutely. times. Absolutely. Oh, of you, lemonade. I don't know. I can't remember where the beer tin was. I, I, I never even saw no, it. Never no, saw I can't it. remember what the red line was, the Swan, or any of the other pubs. In no, the no, 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 no. Not a clue. Not a clue. You're, give, you're giving us away. Shut up. Uh, yeah. Trouble with good things, of course, is that they end up coming to an end. Uh, and we knew that we had a charmed life with the unit. We were playing trains with somebody else's train. We're not playing uh, trains. We wasn't playing trains. I was. Yeah, you was. Yeah. yeah, I'll give you that, yeah. In 2008, Southwest Trains finally decided that they were going to divest themselves of what, for them, was a redundant asset. Um, thankfully for railway history, uh, the Bluebell Railway stepped in 
uh, and bought the unit for a nominal one pound. I'd have given them a tenner if they'd have asked me. Um, the unit was once again taken into the shed under Chris's care. It was cleaned. It was prepped. It was hand polished. Hand polished. Hand polished. Have you ever tried to polish four coaches by hand? I can no, because tell I'm you. not an idiot. No. No, you're just going to scratch your nail varnish. So oh, I don't know that. So, yes, it is an absolute nightmare to polish four coaches and a loco. Yep, um, seven, 73109, uh, that was our pet ED at the time. That was polished up. And on the 7th of January 2009, uh, the unit was placed on depot exit signal, Whiskey 1135. It was supposed to be the last run in service under its own power. It was going to go from f- fast from Wimbledon to Woking with 109 coupled on the back, pick up VIPs, of which one was Mr. Pettit. Sorry, I missed that one. Sorry, did, yeah, did. I did. Keep yeah, up, keep up at the back. I will. I'll be uh, busy. The thing is, with three four one seven, it doesn't do drama often, but when it does, it don't muck about. So we're on the signal, and then Chris gets a shout to come to the leading cab. It loves a bit of a drama, doesn't it? Hey, eh? I don't know why I put a can of petrol over it and burnt it. Sometimes I tell you. So you I got pres- called up to the front um, to the leading cab by the driver. Um, she was sitting on. On the signal, one one was it one one three five? I yep. don't know. I can remember. I only won the panel. So, um, <laughs> as long as you pay attention, that's all right. <laughs> um, so I was called up to the driver. He told me by told me made my jaw at the floor. After all we'd done, polished it, cleaned it, loved it, looked after it. He decided he was going to stick a leg out of bed and go. The speedo wasn't working and failed. And normally you're supposed to take the unit back out of service and put it back to bed. Uh, and I thought, what the hell are we going to do? There was a train load of VIPs, including Mister Pettit. Um, you've got to do it. He's the general yeah, manager. He's the general manager. It's the rules. Yeah, there was a train load of VIPs, including Mister Pet himself, and if you can imagine, God, but way more important. Um, waiting to welcome him, and after a few seconds, the driver displayed a very fine piece of improvisational thinking. I got you right that time, that didn't I? Good. Well that done. I got it right that time. Three weeks was taken. Yeah, that three week. weeks. Yeah, um, and he explained that his schedule card might be moved over to obscure the speedo. Oops. Yeah, um, oh, so it floats across the wind guy underneath it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and if he couldn't see the speedo, then he couldn't tell if it wasn't working. <clears throat> it's perfectly reasonable. Very reasonable, yes. very reasonable. Um, <laughs> regard, regardless of whether the speedo or, the, or was or wasn't working that day, no idea, Your Honour, couldn't see a thing. 3417 reached the bottom of Wabish Bank with a dead 73, which is holding us back. Um, as she was dead as the door now behind us, and she in turn we've done exactly 90.6 miles an hour. And we have the evidence. Oh, yes. Yes, oh, guilty as charged, my lord. slowed down and near it that got to the camera anyway right that final run um down to woking then back to east grinstead with the ed on the front we arrived at east grinstead uh, it was an overcast afternoon much like it's been today as we came off the juice the lights went out the mg ran down and the wimbledon contingent thought that's that then there's a whole new story about the 73109. No, don't do that. We're not going to go. Don't there. do that. One. No, that's another, another, yeah. another, another day. Yeah. We, th- we thought we'd had fun. We've got away with it this long. Game over. We needn't have worried, really. It was, on, it was at East Grinstead for 24 hours. Um, Bruce Knights, um, who we must mention, was then owner of Eastley Works. He'd revived it. And he was already a self-confessed admirer of 3417. Um, he'd spoken to the Bluebell Railway, Bluebell Trust, One Bluebell Railway Chairman. Clever anyway. people, they were clever yeah. people. Clever people, yes. That's it, clever Roy Watts yeah. of the Bluebell Railway, who was in charge at the time. And he'd spoken to him at the opening ceremony. And the, the essence of that conversation was, she's the last one. She works. She's too good to sit on a viaduct. I'll give her a home. So Roy went, Roy being a man of many words, went, do it. The next day, GBRF turned up with two EDs, hooked up to the VEP, and dragged it uh, down to Eastleigh. And that was the start of a nomadic existence. The unit found itself at Eastleigh and Bournemouth 
and Wimbledon and Tunbridge West Yard. I've got to do the list. Uh, Wimbledon again, Bournemouth again, Clapham Yard, Wimbledon, Clapham Yard, Bournemouth and Clapham Yard. It was like it was on a yo-yo. You know. Where it didn't end up was Timbuktu. Yeah. And, and while it was travelling around all around the things, it had all its spares in the brake band. Yes, it, it carried all... It was every, like that, now. Yeah, at that point, all the spares that we had lived in the brake band. So that was that was all you were getting in there. Um, the visits to Swanage and the Midhance happened again, uh, usually with us two and our good friend Will Jones in tow. Again, always for the train, never for the beer. Um, Your nose is growing when you said that, you know that. What? Your nose is growing when you said that. I'm waiting to be struck by lightning. Yeah, I think you might, um, yeah. It was during these years of jiggery pokery and mucking about that um, the three of us, Will, Bucky, and I, found ourselves in the Prince of Wales in Wimbledon. There's a theme here, isn't there? There's a theme there, there is. There's a theme here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's called "Don't Take Us to a Pub" because um, <laughs> we tend to collect scrap iron. Um, one night, about two thousand, late two thousand and eleven, I guess, uh, we'd accident. I've written this down here. We'd accidentally thrown several pints of beer down our necks. We're quite, we're quite careless like that. Oh, it's terrible. After about the fifth point, someone suggested that 3417 should have a proper support group. Um, someone may have agreed. I don't know who that was. Someone may have hiccuped. I don't know. No. We took Some, that as Someone a yes. may have said, get another round in. Yeah, it wasn't Jones then, was it? No, uh, no, no, no. No, it was Jones, but you would have paid for it. I would have done yeah. Um, <laughs> what came out of that conversation was a name. It was the Southern Electric Traction Group. We took the inspiration from the the, the diesel traction group, the DTG, uh, the owners of Den, uh, D1015, amongst others. And that was Gwil's idea because he was part of the DTG. At the very start. Yeah. yeah. When we talk about mending trains on the ballast later on, one of us knew what they were talking about. Um, that's elegant proof that good ideas happen in pubs. So don't take us along, for God's sake. Yeah, you um, never know what you might end up with. Yeah. Within six months, we'd approached Roy Watts, um, who's always been a friend of the unit, and we said, we know what we're doing, more or less. Well, he does. Uh, um, <laughs> would you like... Would you? I did my best, all right? This is on camera. Yeah, I know, um, I know. We, we know what we're doing. Do you want us to look after your unit for you? Uh, Roy has always been a friend. Roy said yes. Again, man of few words. A couple of months after that, thanks to an introduction by Chris Jackson, who is senior editor of the Railway Gazette Group, and I think a member of the Model Railway Club. He's a good lad. All right, Chris. Um, he owes me a tenner for the name drop now. Um, we got, we courted and we secured the support of Bombardier Transportation to carry out a repaint for the unit. In that picture, which is probably about 15 years old, she doesn't look too shabby. By the time she'd been in open store, at various locations around southeastern and the southwestern, she was looking fairly sorry. I think the the, the uh, there's a there's a picture right at the front that shows three four one seven at Clapham, and she looks a bit bit sorry for herself. Bit tired. Yeah. A little bit tired. Um, we had support from Siemens and SWT later SWR for the move and continued storage for three four one seven at Strawberry Hill. More about that later. Uh, the cleaning of the remaining good trim was sourced by TBM of crew. Uh, recovery of parts, scrap parts, effectively, from Unipart Rail at Doncaster, who went through their warehouses and said, we don't need that, we don't need that, we don't need that. They still charged us. Yeah. <laughs> Not as much as they could have done. <laughs> yeah. We got sponsorship from the, for the brake overhaul from Armstrong Powerhouse, who some of you may know. Uh, the new step boards that are now being fitted were sponsored by Tom Cairns of Real Time Trains. Um, the list goes on. We, we, what we didn't know after that initial conversation over too many beers in Wimbledon is that when 3417 came back from Ilford um, in 2015, we'd still be working on the restoration seven and a half years later. <sighs> And that's where we are why, now. Why didn't you preserve a SIG? There are less doors. Where's the fun in that? Good point. You have to do the work. I don't know. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, you just make tea. So we ended up at Strawberry Hill, which is where we are now. Um, Strawberry Hill is, a, I've written here, it's a large and important part of the restoration of 3417. In fact, short of the people who are actually doing the work, it's probably the most important part of the project yep. because we're undercover, because we're warm, we're dry, we're secure, we can hold stores there, uh, we can make tea there. Um, 
having somewhere that is clean, dry and warm to work with tea and all, all the all the ancillaries makes this job a hell of a lot easier. Um, when you look at the conditions that other preservation groups have had to endure over the years, specifically the DGG, who I think were in a yard at Southall for a while. I think in the right. open. You are right. Willem said, stick it under. No, actually what he said was stick it under cover. Mm. But Will um, deserved that being working out in the outside. Yeah, he's, yeah. He was from Liverpool. He's, yeah, used, he's, he's, he's not used to roofs. No, he's um, seven years have taught us a lot. We've developed a following of nearly seven and a half thousand people over Facebook and Twitter. Some of them are the same person, but we're still going to count it. We yeah. don't mind. You know, um, we've set up Strawberry Hill as a functioning maintenance depot. That's all down to him. I had to be nice. I, you, oh, you, oh, you, yeah, you. Um, just want to point at the man to blame. That's all. Yeah, yeah, um, we've who's... got stores. We've got tools. We've got workstations. We've got our own messing facilities where we go to make a mess. Um, we've got offices. We've got a trim shop. Uh, um, take the trim shop, for example, for, as an example. When we started at Strawberry Hill, the trim shop was one table, a bit smaller than this, um, with two minions, Lynn's mum and Lynn, um, working to strip the seats back, the rotted seats. All of these things became damp during open store. Vets are single glazed. They don't like being off the juice, like any Mark One coach. Of course, 18 months and without a, power. A leak like a sieve. Oh, yes. It... It didn't do her any favours. By the time we got her to Ilford, mm, probably about 60% of the interior was rotten and it, almost beyond repair. It was new life forms, let's put it that way. Yes, yes. yes. With higher IQs than us, worrying. Uh, probably, yeah. 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 Um, I'm not easily threatened, but, you know, when a, mil a mould looks at you and goes, what are you doing on here? No, it's not nice. Where we are now with the trim shop, we are producing our own seats. We finished making all but two. That's and, what I like to see. Yeah, Do you know your subject. Yeah. Eh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our two first class seats, we are there. We are there. We've rebuilt the interior. Some of it's in, some of it's ready to go in pending completion of other work, which Chris will talk about in a minute. It's the, t the seats are a, a major part of the, the rebuild. And, and I've got to say, Lynn and her mum done a fantastic job and it looks brilliant. Absolutely. 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 So, oh, what pictures have we got there then? Ah, ah, there you go. Home. There we go. There's home. Yes. Look, there's John doing nothing. Yeah. So, work completed so far. Bit of an overview of this because there's quite a lot has been done and a lot of stuff I can't even remember now. Um, so, we've had the break all done, it says there, and the money was raised by uh, Armstrong Powerhouse. Um, the break chests, break ovals, break valves um, are all over. So they've been tick ticketed for mainline working. So it all works. So all up to nine, ISO 9001. I'm sure somebody knows about that or the old BS 5750. So if he wants to go back out on the mainline, everything we work on has to be to a railway standard and has to be to a, a, a an ISO to make sure it can go back out there because we need to prove where the material come from, what's been done, and a 9001 company to do it with. So we're, we're trying to work like a big railway, which we what we do. So Armstrong and Power has kind of underwrote the cost for that. And uh, but for them, we would still be some way from the unit leaving the shed because it, that was a lot of work. Uh timber for new step balls has been purchased to replace the rotten originals. Um again, we've future proofed that a little bit. We've got better wood than we would have before. It's gonna be um uh, preserved better than it would be in, in mainline service because basically I just put the wood on a little bit of black paint on it. So we're going to make it so it's, a, it's going to last a lot longer than it would do in mainline service. And that's a generous donation from Tom Cairns, as, as, as Steve said. I call you Steve then, didn't I? You did. I know. I need to check myself when I say that. No. So we need to, you know, as, as Potter said before. Better. I said, I feel better again. <laughs> <laughs> the air vessels have been inspected, um, and that was paid for by pale pile do uh, donations. Um, the air vessels are the air tanks. Um, they have to be certificated every 10 years. They have to have a uh, check for inside for rust, wall thickness, and various other bits and bobs need to be done with them. And they've been passed for another decade. So it's a big, big thing. These, these, the, the, the overhaul, the steps and the air tanks is a good way more forward for the units to go back out again. We've had all the flexible main res hoses and train pipe brake pipes have been replaced as the originals were life expired. Again, everything on the railway, everything on the unit has a life expiry, and that's seven years. Um, and when we replace them, we future proof them with higher pressure rubber. So if you look at a main res, you're running at about seven bar. 
we've put pipes back on there that run at 2,500 bar. So there's uh, there's no danger of them going. Oh, why muck about? Eh? Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> um, and all the work has been done to at least minimum is BR SWT specs minimum. Um, but where we can, as it says there, we're using higher quality materials and spec. A lot of the modern stuff is much better than it used to be years ago. So we're, why not? Unlike use it? you, unlike me. Yeah. Well, I get better with age. What are you want about? No, no, no. You age like milk. <laughs> I should be getting. Uh, I, should worry about that. Right. I don't care. <laughs> Oh, you've got, got your minder. You've got your minder. You've got your minder. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. 76263 has been refurbished internally and the driving cab has been rebuilt. It, that was badly um, corroded due to the water that got in there, so we've done that. That's, uh, that's, that looks actually really nice. Um, well, we've got light fittings have done. They've been supports. They've been done internally. That all they've all gone rusty where the water got to them. So that, we had new again, painting. That was, that was TBM, right? That was TBM, right? Um, for nothing. Refurb refurbished those for us. So we've done that. And at the moment, 707 is undergoing a heater rewire. The system was blowing out fuses. Um, this was this was uh, we found this was due to a fairly massive hidden corrosion in the in the outside heating conduit, but only on this coach. Frankly, we don't really understand why that coach, but yeah. it did. It is the bane of my life. Um, Three and coaches, good. That one just not, rusted through, yeah. and we don't know why. Um, but everything, as, as everything we do, we're we're we're, we're doing it to go back onto a preserved line. So we've got, we've been doing that to an ETH of the, of the group is to keep the unit maintained to a very high standard. So we have a performance and reliability plan that we do. So we do stuff and we're going to make it better than it was before. So, uh, as it is, cause it's easy to stay on top of the, the things and letting things slide and, and the unit slowly getting worse. So if you're up there, stay up there. It's very, it's very easy to let it drop down. As I say, when it, when it, when it goes, when it goes out and, uh, of the door, everything should work and it should, and, and whether it's required or not. So we may not, we may go on a, a reserve line and it doesn't need heating or lighting, but make sure everything's working. Yeah, Mr. Pettit actually asked us, well, why are you bothering with, why are you bothering doing the what the heating wiring? It won't need it. It'll be apart from me sitting there with my head bowed. Oh, yeah. right. Seriously, him talking to Gordon Pettit is hysterical. When he started on the railway, Gordon, uh, Gordon, I can't call him Gordon. It's Mr. Pettit. I can't Mr. do Pettit. it. Mr. Oh, call me Gordon. I can't do that. Like God saying, call me Frank, you know, it's just what doesn't work. Um, Gordon like, asked, why, why yeah. bother doing it? The simple answer is, once it's done, it's done. If we hold her at that level, mainline ready, wherever she goes, whatever she does, she, she's up to it. If we start dropping back things, it, yeah. Like Chris says, it's a slippery slope. And what do you let go? What's, you let, what's the next thing you don't want to do? Yeah, where do you draw the line? Where do you where do you stop? So you stay up there, which is a pain in the bloody ass, to be honest. Because don't mince your words, mate. Say I'm what sorry, you think. No, it yeah. is a pain in the ass because you've got to keep it up there and you've got to keep what you're doing, and you can't let it slide because if you do, it is as you say a slippery slope to do. Um, where are we now? Let's see. Motor coach. Motor coach. Yeah. Yes, motor coach. Motor coach has completely has been completed internally. We had some roof vents that were broken and leaked. Um, and there's a little story about the um the quality of the build when it was built in Holgate, um, about the vents. Yes. Um so the coach is good enough for service and good it looks it looks rather splendid actually, doesn't it? From what it it's, was before. It's yeah. tidy, yeah. Uh externally we repaired a blown glatter and pop and popped provision stripes. A what? So, popped provision stripes. <laughs> yeah. Is that the same as a corrosion strip? Nearly. Nearly. We'll go for a walk in a minute yeah, if you want. Right. You know, yeah, nah, nah. you know yeah. what it is. It's like a beer. That's what oh, I love yeah, it as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seven six two six two is the last vehicle we acquired major internal work, uh, and it's the worst vehicle to fall because it was stuck out in the in the air, uh, and the water and everything else was getting to it. So at the moment we're doing uh, the driving cab, which is being rebuilt, and it's be rebuilt like the other end. Um, second class saloon's been done, and the first class compartments. There's a whole raft of other work that escapes me at the moment. I'm sure we've done loads. And uh, and and there's a good statistic I've got here. We started off with 100, 150 open work orders, which are, we call FMAs, which are fleet mode analysis. At the moment, we're down to 30. So we're getting close to where we need to be. Uh, so in the old words of an old BR ever, we're getting there. So what do you have left to do? Or more likely, what have we not found that's yet to do? <laughs> like any restoration project, one step forward can lead 30 steps back. Um, the trim needs finishing, but you're nearly there. 
Uh, it is a fourth row bridge, and in other words, I get to one end and you start at the end. We have a place trim on in a three point plan, which is number one, which is a really bad trim. Number two is the material that is good enough for service but could do doing. And then we've got number three, which is the very fine tooth comb to make it look beautiful. So we're on number two at the moment, so we're going through that. Well, I'm not. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the, the Royal Week, yeah. yeah. Um, so 30 odd jobs open to complete and nine exams to do, plus a CPM doors, etc. And return to work, and it's what you upon me. There we come. I love your optimism. Um, PMI. right, look, uh, I think you lot have put up with enough for a little while. You deserve a break, you do. I deserve a I break. I mean, exploring at the doors, is a that's never a good sign, no, is not it? Good no, sign. No, 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 right. I think uh, the break is about 20 minutes. Yep. So So ladies and gentlemen, um as uh, my, my good friend driver Potter and team says we will reconvene at 20 to 9. 20 to 9. Can I please ask for those of you that are in the room to make the usual three pound donation in the box uh, to help keep the electors running? Can I please ask everybody on Zoom to make a similar donation or more to our coffee uh, collection, uh, KOFI that is, um, because lectures don't just happen. And as I said, it's by your donations that we can continue to make the more interesting lectures available. For those of you that are in the room, there is a great deal of SETG merchandise at the back. Spend money. Spend money. Sorry. There is the newly produced um, MRC Confat available. Spend money. And we'll be back together in 20 minutes' time. Until then, thank you. Well, thank you for that. Nice of you to come back. I hope you had a nice cup of tea and a bun. How nice. many have run away? Hang on. Yeah. yeah. No, no, you're clear. Uh, Is that because we locked the doors? Yeah. Was, yeah. A bit unsporting, obviously. I really. know, I know, but it's the only way we can keep them in it, I'll tell you. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'll pass you over to my. Rotund friend over there. <laughs> I don't like you anymore. You've never known. I'm me. not sharing my sweets of time with you anymore. So over to uh, over to. Uh, what's that? That's big. That hurt you saying that, didn't it? Yes. Right then, seats. I'm sorry about. It. I've got to talk about seats. They are a massive part of the project. Um, we have developed, as we said a little while ago, uh, the, our own cottage industry for repairing them. Initially, we were looking at sending the whole lot away um, to an external contractor, uh, Hampshire and Dorset Trim, I think, wasn't it, uh, down at Eastleigh? Something like that, yeah. yeah, they, yeah. they build bus seats near the Eastleigh Airport. Correct. Because it's something to do, isn't it? Yes. It's better than being at Eastleigh Airport. Indeed. <laughs> um, when the quotes came back for that, even though it was effectively mates' rates, very much mates' rates, yeah, yes, we were looking at more than ten thousand pound. And I haven't got that down the back of my sofa. And it's not like you haven't checked. I have. Yeah, um, ten grand we hadn't got then. To be honest, we haven't got it now, but we just couldn't stomach that. So we thought, okay, we'll do it ourselves. Bearing in mind, well, look at him. Would you trust him with a sewing machine? I wouldn't trust him with razor blades and shoelaces, but there you go. Different story. Um, <laughs> we attempted to buy fresh maquette from the people who manufactured it for BR. Um, and there were various emails backwards and forwards. And eventually they used the, the magic phrase minimum order. Yeah. Minimum order for them was 500 meters. Now, to put that in, into perspective, 500 metres would be enough to trim the unit, um, the shed, my front room. My front room. Uh, my Wembley, next door neighbour's front room and most of my votes. And Wembley Stadium. Yes. Yeah, quite a lot. Didn't need it. Couldn't, couldn't do it. And also the money they wanted, the price they quoted was approximately the national debt of Nigeria. So it was like, stuff that. At that point, uh, Mr Pettit... <clears throat> Yep. Mr. Pettit contacted us and said, um, I've been talking to the National Railway Museum, who at the time were just about to start the refurbishment of their two hap. And if anybody doesn't know what a two hap is, and I'm sure they do, they probably do. Yes. But let's pretend I know something. <laughs> shut up. You can shut up too. Uh, <clears throat> no sweets for you at playtime either. Um, a two hap is effectively half of one of those. Same amount. Uh, same doors at every seat bay, but a two-car. 
500 horsepower, cracking little workhorses. The one that is at York is actually an ex-Wimbledon unit. Um, the NRM had realised that of the stock that they got, this one had probably done the most miles. I think Bob Gwynn reckoned it had done half uh, mil one million or one and a half million miles in 40 odd years. Um, they decided it was important and they wanted to show it off properly. Like ours, it had been sat in the open and the damp for years. Mr. Pettit, being a clever chap, oh, dang <clears throat> oh sorry, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, contacted the NRM and said, "The people who are looking after the train that I happen to have uh, happens to share my name, uh, they can't afford to buy maquette. You're using the same stuff did on theirs. What are you doing about it?" And the NRM were able to spend money for the minimum order. The NRM, being decent sorts and very pragmatic, said, we're not going to use it all. We'll phone around groups who might want to use some. They rang us and we took four rolls off them. Um, how, how many rolls have we got left? About two? So quite, well, that's, that's, good, that's a good hundred and some odd metres of maquette that we've already gone through. Um, enough. Enough. We know what the people are like who might travel on it. We're not taking any chances. They let us on board for a start. Um, so we piggybacked the NRM's order, saved ourselves a bit of money. It still cost us some, but it was money well spent. So the trim shop was then in business. Maggie, Lynn's mum, ex-railway, ex-commercial guard at Woking, probably one of the nicest people I've ever worked with. Uh, Maggie, in her previous career before the railway, was a seamstress. Now, like I said, we wouldn't know one end of a sewing machine from another. Speak for yourself. You, I've seen you. No, don't even try it. Um, he sewed himself to a piece of fabric. You know, it's, it's, it's embarrassing. Um, he sewed nearly sewed himself to the table. Um, Maggie took one look at the mouldy piles of seats that we had at the time and said, I can do that. That is what Maggie was shown. All of this is purely water damage and moths. I hate moths. I hate moths. Moths hate shaken back as well, don't oh, they? They do. Yeah, moths don't like shaken back. We found that. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible little things. Anyway, Maggie took one look at that lot and said, yeah, I can do that. So Maggie and Lynn and Doug and myself and Coops, between the five of us, started stripping that lot down. Uh, Maggie, after a bit of experimentation, worked out how to build the seat covers and away she went. Maggie was a machine. She would come in at nine, half nine in the morning. She would plonk down behind her sewing machine and she would work solidly until three, half three in the afternoon every day that she attended. Um, but for Maggie uh, and Lynn's support, um, we would be years behind where we are. They've done a fantastic job. As, as I speak to you now, I spoke to Lynn during the break, we've got two first-class seat bases to do, and we're there. That's it. We're done. And when you see what we started off with, that's not a bad old boast. It's an excellent job, I've got to say. Yeah. Absolutely um, excellent job. So we have a, a very small video, which is at normal speed, is it not? Is yeah, it yeah, yeah. This is, this is actually the speed we worked at. We turn them around, I yeah. tell you. Look at that. All right, we might have slowed it down a bit. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Yeah. 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 Ta da. I think this is you. I think it's me. So on ongoing work. So we got windows and door frames to do, which as you can see there, these are the door frames at the bottom of the doors. We've got them to replace on some of the uh, some of the doors. Say so that it's an ongoing project and we do find things as we're going along but we knew about these and we these made up to be done we've got door window door frame, window frames which we've replaced um again we future proof them because we've used decking because decking is pressurized doesn't allow water in um and it might they and once you put the outside in you don't even notice there so it makes it much better um and door frames there's the uh, quarter pads and there's a door frame on the left hand side there that's uh second hand yeah it's the same machine and as you can see on there, this is this is decking, and that's been replaced in there. So again, we're trying to future-proof the unit by making it better than it was than the original 
crappy old wood that we are used to use. Decking, decking sounds cheap. It is. But like Chris said, it's pressure treated. And also all those parts, those window parts that we're putting back were always designed to be sacrificial because BR knew these things leaked. They leak like sieves. So what we do is we make sure that we're, we're getting best, best use out of the, the limited money that we've got. By the way, if anybody's got a checkbook that they don't want, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, we're good at practicing signatures. Yeah. Um, You're groveling again now. I, You're groveling. I am. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. So this, these, <laughs> I was, I'm a quite old, you know. Um, You're very old. Uh, this here on the left, that is a seating bay. If you look at uh, where the heaters are, if you look at the, the wood either side of that, you'll see that it looks a bit chipped and old. There's a reason for that. It's because, what, about five years' worth of water damage? <clears throat> if you look down the middle of there, there between where the, this piece here is, um, there's a water channel that goes down there with a pipe. <clears throat> and the pipe and the water sits in the channel of the, of the large side light and goes down there and goes outside. A lot of them were disappeared, were rotten. So all that happened was the water ran through and just rotted the floor. So when you look at the previous uh, one where it's on the on the edges of the doors, that's exactly the same. So yeah, so it's, so we, it's basically just water damage that's done that. Yeah. So that particular that particular coach, this is seven six two six two. This is the last coach to see major work, and this is the one that we're doing now. Steve and Chris in the middle there. Um, we cut out that piece of the floor completely and replaced it with fresh marine ply, and then bingo. Core, cool, you're good. Look at that. You're good. Ta da. <laughs> as if, as if by magic. magic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we nearly planned that, you know. Nearly. Lawrence is not impressed. Um, <clears throat> fresh lino, fresh wood underneath. That's the kind. That's the kind of rebuilding we've had to do with that coach. Um, when the seat backs go in, the seat frame goes in, then the seat backs go in. You won't see it. You won't know. And if you look at the new bit of lino there and the old bit of lino. They are the same line. So that shows you how dirty that is. That's one of our things to clean, isn't it, as well? Oh, yes. Yes, yes oh, a joy of joy. joy. But that is the same line. So it shows you what the new stuff and the old stuff is. Mainly because of my dirty boots. I walk over it all the yeah, time. I know. Go, yeah. You're fairly unkempt, aren't you? I am mostly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you get to the step boards. Uh, in the middle, look at the pile of balsa wood on the floor. That's pretty much what happened to... You're all right there, pal. Uh, um, that's what happened to, to most of the step boards. B, as Chris said, BR used a certain type of timber to a certain quality. They used it on the basis that every <clears throat> how many years? How many years were they expected to last? Two or three years? Those those uh, seven years. Seven years. But they they didn't last. They were they were sacrificial point. There was always a sacrificial point. It's the same as these pieces on a on the side there. They're sacrificial. So they rust and that doesn't. It was the same with the door frames. The door frames, they were there to rust because the water running in there, sock rust, sorry, they used to rot. Um, they were made to rot and made to be replaced quite easily. But yeah. they used pretty poor quality materials, to be honest. Yeah, just the stuff that we're putting back now, that uh, that door sill there, um, that is the same quality wood as the timber that we've got on these new step boards now. Uh, Rich, Richard Salmon uh, from the Bluebell Railway, our resident uh, woodworking genius. There's, there he is. Yeah, ain't enough. You're good, you know. You Yay. are. Good. Hey. Anybody think we planned this? Crikey. Between Richard and Darren, Darren has dealt with uh, the window frames that have gone in. Uh, Darren's a fitter from Brighton. It's not his fault. No one's perfect. Um, Rich uh, works on the carriage and wagon with the Bluebell. Rich came, measured up that timber, machined it all for us. So between these two boys, they're, they're doing unbelievable work to bring the unit back into service. And if you look at one side, this side is completed. This side is to do. Yeah. So that's, if you think we've got the other three coaches that are done, that's as much as we've got to do for the trim. Yeah. I'm sure there's more. Oh, there, there, must be more. Be more. there will be more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Why didn't you choose a SIG? I don't know. <laughs> right. Are we all there with that one? Ah, there we go. Oh. Forms, paperwork, and records. My most favourite subjects. You like paperwork, I don't you? I love paperwork. You don't swear at paper at all, I do you? I don't swear at paperwork one little bit. But it's 
most of making a train has to go has nothing to do with spanners, grease, and paint. Doesn't have nothing to do with the drivers most of the time. It's paperwork. Oh, I'm just saying. Um, it's paperwork. Bloody paperwork. And where did you get that picture from? Uh, oh, look. Uh, yes. That's so you, that's you doing work. It's boring. I loathe it. But it has to be done or the unit isn't going anywhere. We run to ISO 9, I'm running to ISO 9001 to keep up to there. So we have all the paperwork we would do on a mainline train. So it's onerous, absolutely onerous. And as I sort of come back from a maintenance background from Wimbledon Depot and Effingham, I really understand the benefits of, and pain of making sure that all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed. Without it, you're going nowhere. A visit to the depot, you'll, you'll find that you were coming into basically a mainline depot. You'll have an induction and safety brief before anything else is done. Um, we have the maintenance records, which are kept up to date for every job we carry out in the unit. We have competency system for our staff to ensure that they're doing the job properly and the job they're doing, they're trained to do. Uh, we have maintenance docs. We have COSH. I think that's for that's the control of substances, hazards of health, um, uh, as an example, and an engineering head uh, who polices what we do. So I police what the guys do. I get policed by the engineering head to make sure that what I'm doing is correct as well. So it's exactly what it would be like on a big railway. And, and it helps us keep us up to date with maintenance and changes that need to be made to keep the unit relevant to a modern railway. It's not fun, but it's essential to get, to get us anywhere near the main line. Yeah, sooner or later, we are going to go on the main line. we initially hauled, and then the, the, the aim has always been bums on seats, in-service, working specials. Before we get anywhere near that, uh, the ORR, ORR, HMRI, they're all going to be over us like a rash. Yeah. Because and you're used to rashes, aren't you? I am. I've got lots yeah. of rashes. Yeah. Um, How's the cream doing, by the way? Bad, oh, okay, right. um, um, the, um, they'll come along. They're going to look what we do and make sure we're doing everything properly. And we won't be going, going out the door unless they say they, they've yeah. got a tick in the box from us. Yeah. So, again, I say, I bloody hate it, but it's got to be done. I do love it, lis listening to you swear at folders. It's wonderful. Do I swear? Oh, yes. Mostly? Yes. No, yes. can't see that, no. Yeah. The air goes blue. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Right. Back to the shed. Right. Not only are we looking after the unit, we've got to look after the shed as well. Um, it's, again, I've, I've said it before, it, it bears repeating. It's the most important part of the team, second possibly to the kettle. You know, Um We've worked, well, I said, when I say we've worked under the unit, what I mean is he's worked under the unit in the cold and the wet and on the ballast, and I've watched him. And it's <laughs> lovely when you're watching somebody do that. I wouldn't recommend it doing it. It's not nice. Not nice at all. Um, the, sh uh, the main shed at Strawberry Hill was built in 1897 by the London and South Western. The bit that we're in is the extension, and that was built in 1908. It, uh, the whole lot was used as a steam shed. Um, Sorry, the original part was used as a steam shed uh, when it was opened. And then when the line was electrified around about 1910 or so, mid-1910s? Sound about that. Yeah. Sound By Siemens, that. interestingly enough. They they provided all the switch gear and what have you for that. Um, it was converted into car sheds. Uh, and they were used for cleaning and light maintenance, um, much as they are even today. Exactly the same. Yeah, exactly the same. So our bit of the shed uh, and under BR was used for asbestos removal when we first started. So it, it was um, it, it was interesting because all the inside of the shed is linered um, uh, when they had the asbestos removal. So for us, it's much it's good because it's lined it and makes it quite warm in there. So you'll probably see me walking around there with my underpants um, and, <laughs> and never, he, ever never, uh, never say that again. Never say that again. Those leopard skin briefs. <laughs> Lovely love. So that was used as, that was used as the uh, asbestos removal for some of the early EPBs, um, early six and stuff, until it went to sellers where there was a designated um, building made for it. This was a bit of a stopgap um, where they were removing the blue meanies, as they used to call them. Mm. It was then used by BR Research Department for in, in, introduction of new stock and locomotives. And I remember being there when I was apprentice, being dragged around there, and it was damned interesting. It was really because you was on the, the forefront of all the modern technology that was going into units, not on just on the southern region, but across the whole um, of BR. It was a real um, corner post of what the, the BR was doing. I, I found it really, really interesting. So, I mean, they did things like testing various traction and power equipment and, and 
and other stuff until privatization, but it was a really interesting place to be. And the back of the shed used to be filled up with lots of different stock, very strange stuff. We've seen pictures of 319s in there. Or 501s, just testing Networkers, yeah. uh, class, ni class 92s in yep. there. No, 92s, they're GTOs, they were doing GTO testing, uh, and they were doing chopper testing. It was just a real, it was just a real, uh, interesting place to go. Yeah, you know, one of the things we've got um, in what we call the dead shed, which is the the two dead roads next door. Um, on one side, there is a booster unit booster from unit. a Southern Railway. Was it Class Seventy? It was a, no Seventy One. I think Seventy Seventy One. I always get it. I always get it wrong. Yeah, a booster set out of one of those. Sat on the floor. And they used um, to have three of those. They used to have three of those together. So yeah. it's quite an interesting place. So we currently lease the building from SWR with NRB and the ultimate owners of it. Uh, the shed is currently in a reasonable shape. It's not falling down. We've got a new roof, um, but it could be better. And as it's our, it, it's the key to the def, uh, to the unit. There's no two ways about it. Without that shed, we would not be where we are today. It, and, in, and in some ways, it's a bit more important than the unit. In case yes. because without it, we can't do what we want to do. Um, so the shed is in currently reasonable shape, but we better. And we've, we've spoken to Network about, about possible light repairs and repairs to window frames. And previous assistance from there has included repairing badly a damage, which was up there. So, you know, they're working with us. And, and I don't know if we can say about Mr. Hendy is helping us as well. Um, Peter Hendy uh, joined us last week, along with various other dignitaries. And shown Gordon around. Pettit. Uh, Gordon Pettit, yes. Yep. Um, an 88-year-old man who can reduce the pair of us to a blubbering Rex. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I can't call him Gordon. I have to call him Mr. Pettit. It's, I have to call uh, him yes, Sir. Uh, yes. Yeah. No, you just ran away. That's what you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. It was probably just as well. Um, <laughs> so the, the one thing with the shed is, on, I mean, we moved in there, and I mean, we, being in the industry at that time, I, I had various contacts, and luckily we got in there on, what day was it? Christmas Day, wasn't it? Christmas oh. Day, yeah. Christmas Day before 23rd. 23rd of December 2015 at about a quarter to midnight. Yep. Not that I paid attention or studied that date or anything. So um, we've got to thank Siemens and the old SWR for getting us in there. Yeah, as and say, Network Rail for putting up with us as well. And it's Network Rail for putting up with us as well. Yeah. Right. <gasps> Good leave. Who, who, oh, look at all them. Look at that rogues gallery. Oh, my God. Lord hey. above. I'm sure somebody, somebody, some of those are on Police 5, aren't I was they? Say, somebody called Crime Watch. Yeah, I think uh, it's Crime Watch, yeah. Right. We have built, um, almost by accident, a small and dedicated and incredibly professional team since the start of all this. Um, I'm going to mention a few names. Uh, the main minions um, are Gwil Jones, Darren Franklin, Lynn Abrahams, Douglas Abrahams, Maggie Abrahams. We did well out of the Abrahams family. Um John Denyer, Mick O'Connor, Richard Salmon, Tony Francis, Bob Hudson, Steve Trow, Rob Milner, Kieran O'Shea, Dave Pointer, Chris Page, Oscar Martin, Alan Hingston, James Cummins. That list isn't exhaustive. I just went that far because I'm getting a fiver for each name. All right. Well done, Sam. Well done. Well thank, done. thank you. There we go. Look after yourself. So never drink with me. I like that. That works. Uh, All right. Uh, yeah. Um, we're blessed also with a hardcore of people outside of the volunteer corps who donate money to us, either a one-off or five pound a month or a pound a month or 50 P or whatever. Um, that money, uh, we learnt, we learnt this off of um, the guys who built tornado. It's called don't ask for a lot from people because you won't get it. But if you say to someone, the price of a pint and a pack, a packet of crisps is a fiver and you can probably afford to do without one of those a month. If you can give it to this pile of scrap iron here, then all of a sudden we're going places. And a lot of people bought into it. Obviously, as things have tightened up, people's had to tighten their purse strings. Some people have had to walk away from it. But we still have that hardcore of people donating to us. And without them, we'd be stuck. No, absolutely. And everybody even gives a pound. We, you know, it moves a unit forward to going out the door. And yeah. we really appreciate that. We do. I think Alan Pegler said... Uh, railway preservation is a great way to turn a large amount of money into a small amount of money very, very quickly. Oh, my Lord, you're not kidding. T if you want to do anything on the railway, um, take a price, double it, go away to a manufacturer, take their quote back, add that to the price you originally thought of, and that's probably what you're going to pay. As soon as you say railway, there's money. Chiching, chiching. Oh, yes, just a bit. So the generosity of people who are supporting us, not just with 
hands-on stuff, but also by dipping into their pockets is incredibly important to us. And I should say that the work that the team that Chris leads, that, has, that they've carried out so far, is one that we are justly proud of. And we enjoy the fact that we are well looked at inside and outside of the industry. The sobering part is, though, unfortunately, there's two of the members are not here anymore. Um, Gwil was one of the founding members of us when we sat in a pub and drank copious amounts of beer. <laughs> and I'm not sure he bought any of it, but, you know, um, he wasn't good. At, you know, he had short arms and long pockets, as I obviously remember. And he passed away in 2019, so he was a gang of three. And in June 2020, Maggie, our seamstress, he suddenly passed away. And it's going to be a source of real massive regret these people and one of them part of the original gang of three uh, won't be there when we put it out on the main line. So that's one of the downsides of, you know, of running a job like this. Yeah. Um, and seeing as you lot are watching at home and you're here, we'd like to say publicly how much we appreciate their contribution and how much they're missed. Absolutely. Yeah. I did all that without a wobbly bottom lip or anything. I'm very proud of myself. The future. Hooray! The future is bright. That means that we're nearly the future done. Is on. They're all yes. putting their coats on. Is that yeah, normal? No, it's not. Right, okay. They've not gone out the door by now. I've got to say, there we go. The future. Dan, 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 dan. This has always been an open ending project. It always will be an open ending project. It's, it's like the fourth verbiage. It's never going to finish. And But we get to a level where we're on top of it, but it'll always be something to do. But the first part we have to do is to get the unit back into traffic, not for mainline work but in sufficient repair to be moved over the national network and to restart the heritage railway visits that we pioneered about 15 years ago. No mean feat. We're there. We're getting there. We're not that far away. We're looking at somewhere that maybe next summer, maybe go to Swanage, hopefully. It, it's not casting concrete. And it's one of the things that I, is, uh, he always bangs on me and I always say is if it ain't ready, it ain't going because I won't put anything out there that's a danger to the network. Um, the unit is in touch against us, and we're very close to doing it. And the unit is in best condition it's been in for a decade. And that's been achieved by a group of less than 20 people, really, and supported by a group of around 300 donors. And if you, any of you today, thank you very much. Um, it's real peanuts in preservation terms. Um, but I have dreams. I have a dream. Don't tell them about your dreams. Don't tell them about your dreams. Please. <laughs> No, there might be children. There, no, it's no, it's past, it's past nine o'clock. Oh, right, okay, right, right. That. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Cover your ears, my darling. Uh, Cover your ears. <laughs> so I have plans. I have dreams. I have, I have a, 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 a reliability and improvement plan which I'm I'm looking at and and is in place. Um, we've got incremental improvements such as LED headlights, which will fit into the um, modern railway. And we've got to look at the modern railway. And a lot of people say don't put LED headlights because it doesn't look right. We've got to fit with the modern le legislation. LED interior lighting, which will reduce the um, load on the MG, which would be a good thing for us. Additional dumpers we fit is, which will allow the MG to be powered off the juice to give heat and light. So a loco can supply that even though she's sitting off the juice on a preserved railway. Uh, because I want, and I, this is an ethan side of Wimbledon, I want the best passenger experience that I can give to the people who go and travel on it. It's it's an ethos I had when I was at Wimbledon, and it's an ethos I want this. I want to give you light. I want to give you heat. I don't want you to sit on a train that's freezing cold looking out the windows that's steamed up. So that's my that's where we are, and we'll get there. We will get there. It's just if I can find enough money down the back of the sofa. <laughs> right. You're going to like this word. So to conclude. Hey, it's nearly going on time. It's all going on time now. Yeah, <laughs> We reckon as of today, as of here and now, 70% of the way there. Um, and it's been a big hill to climb, but we're nearly there. That 70%, getting getting it up to 100% will mean hold on the national network. That means going to Swanage. That means going to the Midhands. That means going to any preserved line that wants to invite us. Hint. <clears throat> so what comes next? Uh, as my learned, co I actually wrote down learned colleague here. <laughs> I want that noted. Yes, yeah, well done. As, Thank as you. he keeps telling me, because uh, yeah. I am. Do you want another tenner? <laughs> I know you've only got two in your wallet, mate. You, you hang on to that one. Um, <laughs> as Chris tells me constantly, because I'm the impatient one, he says it'll go when it's right. It's not leaving the shed until it's ready to do so. And he's absolutely right. We're very conscious that what we're trying has never been attempted before. It's been done with units that were withdrawn from frontline service and then 
reinstated by BR, the uh, the the sub and the Hal or yeah. the Noel. It was a it, Bill. It was thank Bill, you. Yes, it's a Bill. Any, like, any any prefix you like, I'll, I'll go for anything. Um, that little six car ran around on its own for a good twenty years, being looked after in incredible detail and care by BR. That's not the same as what we're doing, because we haven't got the resources that BR had. Um, no preservationists have ever taken an EMU out of effective dereliction, put it back together, and then put it back into service. Um, it's also, happened for think, diesel. It's I think we're silly, aren't we? We must be mental. Mental. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all sympathy votes required, please. Um, it's happened for diesels uh, to the diesel traction group D1015. To I think I think it's fair to say probably the flagship Absolutely. of the preserve diesel movement. Certainly when it was launched. Yep. Um, it's happened for steam for thirty or forty years now, um, and the Hastings DMU has proved it's possible with diesel units. No one's done it with a juicer yet. No one's daft enough. No. <laughs> um, we're within striking distance of making it possible. Um, there won't be passengers on the main line first. That's going to need central door locking. And you can see how many doors there are on the damn thing. Hey, lots. We are not going to lock it up like a VEP, just in case anyone goes, how the hell are you going to do that? We'll lock it up like a SIG. Outer ends, one in the middle. Everything else will be plugged and clipped. Leave it alone. It's the it's a, sen a pragmatic way to do it. It's sensible and it doesn't cost the earth. And we have the engineering already, and we have the drawings for it. Yes, um, it's a, it's a little known fact that the VEPs and the SIGs were were all wired for door central door locking. 28, 27, 28, sorry, twenty six, twenty seven, and twenty. I'll get this right in a minute. Twenty five, twenty six. He knows what he's talking about, boys and girls. The last three wires, you had doors left, doors right, doors closed. So if you look at a, a train line door and it's wired for door locking, and two of them were done, one SIG, one VEP in the early nineties were done, and we got the drawings for that. So we we got the engineering behind it. We can do it. We ain't got the money, basically. Yeah. It's like Chris said. We've got a roadmap to follow. We've we've laid it out. Um. It remains our intention to see that thing leave Waterloo in service under its own power. Yeah, we do. And we, we got, sorry, we've got OTM Artifact on it, which is your black box, and we've got GSMR, which we have the kit for. Um, and we've got, this, obviously, the CET toilets we need to do as well. Yeah. But we have the engineering. We have we understand where we're going. We it's just starting to sound like the introduction to the uh, $6 million man, you know. What is that? We, ha we have the engineering. We can rebuild it, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're the man barely alive. No. <laughs> Did you say the man belly or barely? Barely. Oh, barely, okay. barely. I, barely. I just yes, thought I'd check. I just thought I'd check. We have a roadmap. But Steve said, we have a roadmap. We just ain't got the money at the moment. So we know where we're going. We know what we want to do. We have an improvement and reliability plan. We'll get there eventually. We'll get there. I may be very grey by then. Yeah. I, I already am. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, right. That's it. We have a small sales stand running, as you know. Um, Lynn is going to leave the donations. Q I want. I really want us to do a Haynes manual on that. I'd really love to do that. That's such a good idea. Um, Lynn is going to leave the donations QR tag on the screen for those of you who may wish to aim your phone at it, click and make a donation if you choose to do so. Um, that's it. Chris, over to you. We have merchandise in the back by young Paul at the back there, so please fill your boots. Because uh, that's our beer money tonight, isn't it? In lesson, I think. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'm only saying. Did I say that out loud? I said yeah. that. I said yeah. that out loud, yeah. didn't I? Yeah. So we have some merchandise. We have got some goodies in there. We have goodies on our um, website. If you want to go and have a look at that, they're quite interesting stuff. And I think they're just coming up now. So, oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, hang oh, on, oh, guys. We got standardization. Oh, yes, yep. that's Mr. Petty himself. Yep. Um, can't underestimate how good that man is to keep an issue in line. He may have been not about it an awful long time, but bugger me, does he know well. Oh, um, yes. And the word, Lord and Petty. Opens, opens doors. Oh, yes. And last but not least, home to the floor. Have you any questions for us? If I don't know, I'll lie. Let's <laughs> <laughs> try and get the questions under control. Then. Um, if you're watching on Zoom, please put the questions in the comments section, and we will try and pick up questions from them as well. But let's go with our good friend here on the left. Yes. Was there a reason that you and presumably also the NRM chose Bournemouth, sorry, chose a blue blay if you're maquette rather than Bournemouth blue? And are you planning on painting it into NSC livery to match at some point? <laughs> That's a simple answer. The reason it's in that colour is 
So the reason that's in that colour is it's the way it come out of service like that. Um, and to put it back into Bournemouth blue is just, it's not where we want to be at the moment. It's never so we're never going to do that. Um, at the moment, we've already put original orange curtains back into the first class. So we're moving that forward. But at the moment, it, that's a step too far for us. So we've got more important things to get her back out on the track, get her, get the uh, the trim looking like it should do. And then maybe in a few years' time, we may think to go and do it again. So, However, however, if we were to, if someone were to come to us tomorrow with a checkbook, I'm not being funny. I'm not looking at you speculatively because you're in a suit. I promise you, sir. Um, <laughs> if someone were to come to us tomorrow with a checkbook and say, I'd very much like to see 3417 in Network Southeast in BR, if BR blue and grey, I'd have to go and have a lay down. You know, uh, I, that's how I remember things from my childhood on the Southeast. If somebody came to us and said, Network Southeast tomorrow, here's a check for XXX pounds. I dare say we could do something. <laughs> the thing, the reason we painted it in two pack blue is so we can vinyl it. The original, the colour is always going to be blue. That is going to be our base colour. But we can put, you've probably seen some of the four five fires that have vinyls on top of them. And we can just put vinyls on top. So if you want it sky blue pink, you want to pay us to put it sky blue pink, we'll put Would it sky blue pink. Would you stop saying that? Well, I like blue pink, sky blue pink. I, I know. I worry but about you. Going back, to, going back to your question, we're not going to do it at the moment. It's just a step too far. Okay. Somebody else have any questions? Actually, you said that you're going to take on to Heritage Railways. Being an EMU, it depends on electrical current from a third rail. None of those Heritage Railways can take it, let it run on its own power because they don't have a third rail. Absolutely correct. But the, the southern region in its, in, God love it, made everything work with everything. So we can put an ED behind it and you can drive from the vet with an ED behind it. You can put a Crompton there, which is a, a 33 one. It will drive and you can, you can drive that VEP on there. 73, yeah, an ED, 73. Yep. It's all got 27 way jumpers and air pipes. A couple of the other way you go. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we won't come off the juice, but it'll be supplied from the loco. So we can go anywhere, put a loco on it. We can go where you like. Glasgow, where we come. Oh, I want I want to go to Fort William. Yeah. I want to go to Fort William with the VEP and two EDs in the back. Step off and go, oh, look, we're gapped. You know. Oh, I like your it thinking. Could. There might be some restrictions on there for its RA, but yes, it possibly would work on that as well. Yes. Oh, let's go to Liverpool. Yeah. Come on, let's go to Liverpool. Come oh, on, Scouse Land. Yeah. No. Anybody else? Sorry, sorry. Sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, as someone who grew up riding on the third rail units, it's fantastic C1 Preserve. And I was wondering actually why a VET rather than, I forget all the letter codes, but any of the others that SWT had at the time, why was that chosen? We picked, the, we picked these VETs because it's one of the first 20 built. Um, and the unit, is the, this unit was the most altogether unit so i i had to pick something um at that time there were the, the the units were being withdrawn and they weren't very good some of them and i just picked this one i wanted the first 20 that's why i picked it that's the reason first one in bournemouth there was the first ones that were out the first vets were the first ones that were the main line stop on the southern region I'm asking, have you had any contact with people doing the Brighton Bell unit? A lot. Yes, we have. Con we, we do talk to them quite a lot. Um, they've rang me up. They have rang me up, and I've, they've asked me questions and and the like and such. Yes, it's a two-way street. We we talk to guys. Peter Spokes down at um, uh, where is it? Kent Light Railway. He's got various amounts of rust like we've got, um, and <laughs> he's got much more rust. Yes, so. So there, there is a core, there is core people we talk to. Um, we have a lot of spares. Mr. Spokes has a lot of spares, a lot of spares in my place. We just, we, we, it's a very small band of people that we talk to people to keep the units going. So yes, I have talked to the Brighton Bell unit, yeah. Um, we know that coal is now proving a challenge for many of the preserved railways. Sorry, say that again. Coal is proving a yes. challenge. Yes. We also know that obviously with climate change, we need to be greener. Do you ever see the time when a preserved railway will put down a fizzy rail? No. Okay. It's, it'll be way too expensive. 
Um, and it's not something that the OR or, or the HMOR want, want to do. They did it in three bridges and they really didn't want that to happen. Um, they are softening their approach on that because they realize that you can extend the infrastructure and they probably will put third rail round down to straw to Salisbury um, because they need to get rid of diesels out of the, uh, out of the London area by 20, whatever it may be, I can't think it is now. But on a preserved line, it's just not going to happen. It's just too expensive. I just, there's, one, there's one question from Zoom, uh, which is uh, from uh, CR. I don't know who that is. Um, once you're finished, how long would it need to be until it needs to be back in the shed for refurbishment? Well, that's an inch. <laughs> um, well, that's an interesting question. It's it's going to be it's going to be a rolling pro it's a yeah. rolling program. <laughs> you see what I did there? Um, just to answer, just to answer that, once it's refurbished, it will it will have a zero on its clock. Um, it won't have a zero on its clock for uh, life miles. And you won't have a zero on its clock for C4 miles, which is your maintenance miles. But what will happen is it will go back to zero miles for exams. So the exams are every 4,000 miles, nine exams. I don't see us doing nine, that amount of miles over the years. And I see it going for its C4. I shall probably be six foot down by that time that happens. So it, it's, a, it's going to be a long way away before we do that. Bear in mind, as I say, she did, come, she did just come out of C4 when we took her over. Whoever holds your piece. Go on, him. Uh, the the latest the, the generation off the VEPS is about to retire, and there's a spare there's a spare road in Strawberry Hill. Is <laughs> anything extra coming? <laughs> we have had conversations with various people about. Oh, what, what, and I, I, I apologise for the voice. Uh, would you like a four, five, six? No. We've got enough trouble with, I was about to point to you there. I was pointing behind you, but you know what I mean. Um, we've got enough trouble with the four coaches we've got. Um, I'd have loved to, to have taken a four, five, six, because I was actually quite fond of them. They were cracking little units to drive. Uh, they were good fun. Um, I'd love to take a four, five, five. However, I know, drive, I know, I know. However, I'm the driver and he's the one who's got to fix them. I would have taken a DC. If it was a DC, it was allowed to come from Southern. I would have taken a DC because they were way, way more reliable than the 455 from SWR. Um, but unfortunately, it was a total scrap order, so I couldn't get hold of one of those. Um, SWR uh, units are GTOs and they're way more complicated. So you've got things like turbo graphs, you've got to send the traction motors if they go pop back to Germany. Way too difficult, Ben. It's not going to happen. I'm not. I'm not going to take it on board. Somebody else might want to do it, but I'm not. I've got enough years. It, <laughs> it's a shame. It really is a shame. Yes. It would yeah. be lovely to see. It would be nice to think that um, a mainline operator would go. Do you know what? We've got enough money. We can hang on to an eight car and use it for specials. But we live in a world where money is tight at the moment, um, and romanticism has got to take a second place to the cold hard reality that the big railway has got to turn a profit. And if you've got eight coaches sitting in a siding doing nothing, it ain't making money. Then you've got maintaining uh, rolling stock uh, familiarization for the crews, for the fitters as well. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. So probably not. It's enough with this desktop operating vep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you were mentioning earlier about um, the Southern making everything compatible with everything else. Yep. Now, I don't know if there is still an operable TC unit it is. on the go. So would the this unit have the oomph to be able to have a TC as well? Yes. So you could, you could actually have an eight-car special. Might not be the best on timings, but you could still do it. I wouldn't like to run it in mainline service um, because I have no redundancy. So it's the same as a vet. Uh, um, if she ever goes out, she'll go out with um, a, a lifeboat. So she'll go out with a loco. I cannot, I cannot afford to have the unit fall down in mainline service. But yes, it'll work. And one of the services that used to come out of uh, Waterloo, and you probably don't know, it was uh, TC Crompton VEP. And you used to split it. You used to split it. Um, uh, Basingstoke front six would go, or the front four would go to Salisbury. Back four would go down line. 
So everything works with everything. And it was quite interesting to watch the TC, Quantum Power Engine flow through Wimbledon and a vet wind winding away at the back. So it was quite interesting. It did, yeah. 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 But yes, going to question, yeah, Vep to CC, yep, was a treat. Thank you. Thank you, um, ladies and gentlemen. It, um, it only leaves me to thank these two gentlemen for utterly fascinating, very human, and very humorous talk. And I hope you'll show your appreciation in the usual way. Well, that concludes the current lecture season. We reform on the 14th of September with our good friend Paul Isles from Akiriskel. In the meantime, I look forward to seeing you all at Ali Pali next weekend. Until then, a safe journey home, and thank you all.